Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon. Drew and finally Nina went there, while Carly and Kate's surprised us plus, will Ava be Sunny's savior on General Hospital? Well Drew and Nina finally had hate sex on General Hospital, as many of us have been waiting for them too. Carly saw a different side to Agent Kate's. Ava made a discovery she hasn't yet realized, and Jason is about to give Carly back the Metro Court. Shocker on that last one, who didn't see this coming? Drew and Nana did the nasty on his desk and office floor. The entire thing was over-the-top ridiculous, from Mina accidentally ripping his shirt open while they were arguing, to her asking him if Carly ever told him he had an amazing body, and finally his response, you've only seen half of it. Some viewers on social media compared it to a bad porn scene. Others however wanted to scratch their eyes out after it. The conversation after the hate sex was even more hysterical. Nena telling Drew that he probably fantasized about this and took advantage of her state of mind was insane, but it only got worse when she tried to convince him he owed her his help now. Drew wasn't taking it and saying it would take more than rub burns and 40 minutes on his office floor for him to help her. Okay, that singer was a rare winner from Drew. I am not going to be shipping Nina and Drew anytime soon, but as I said in last week's column, Drew has been a lot more tolerable now that he's not attached to Carly's hip. I'm pretty sure this isn't going to be a one-time occurrence between them. Carly coming to Kate's aid after his mugging and helping him through the night on a coma watch was not something I expected, let alone found I wasn't hating. A lot of viewers moaned as Carly just racked up yet another male admirer, but I thought their banter was fun. I did wonder why John didn't clean up and change his shirt, rather than sleep in a bloody mess but whatever. I guess it was so the next morning Nina would get a look at him in his towel in his room, with Carly picked up the room service at the door. And of course Nina took no time informing everyone, mistakenly, that Carly slept with Kate's. Nina, you never learn when jumping to conclusions. Though the scene did look pretty damning. Carly and Kate's as a couple, or just engaging in a flirtatious relationship, would make for good soapy drama as she has no idea he's the one that kept Jason away for so long, not only that, but he used evidence against her to make Jason work as an FBI informant. That's pretty juicy. And right now Jason can't tell her any of that or even warn her to stay away from him and give a good reason. I had noted in a previous column it was odd that nobody had questioned if Sonny was taking his meds given how he's been acting. Christina was shocked to see her dad had started drinking again but didn't bother to bring it up. I'm sure she'll inform Dante when she has a chance. It took Jason, of course, to question Sonny about his medication, but Sonny, as far as he knows, has been taking it. Meanwhile, Eva can't sleep so what does she do? She raids Sonny's medicine cabinet. Oh, but not before taking a whiff of his cologne. Creepy. At least she acknowledged she shouldn't be taking someone else's prescription meds, and really, she has no idea how bipolar medication could affect her. That's just downright dangerous, and there is nothing else she could have taken. Hell, this is Ava down some Martinez. Of course she did this to lead to the discovery of the tampered meds, as she obviously got the placebos and had nothing happen at all. So how long do we think it will take for Ava to put two and two together? Wouldn't it be odd if Ava was the one to realize Sunny's on placebos, especially given her history of switching Morgan's meds out with them? It would be an interesting circle around. At least we know now that Ava is not involved in tampering with his meds and some speculated. It was interesting to see Drew take a piece Nina did for Crimson on wellness and turn it into an idea to branch Aurora away from media and into the wellness business. And given he's brought Curtis in for his expertise on the subject, again, I can't help but think there will be a lot more scenes and opportunities for things to happen between Curtis, Nina, and Drew, including sexy things for the latter. Also, the whole wellness thing is so up Cameron Matheson's real-life alley, it looks like Sunny's gym and steam room are going to have competition. So Leela's dress was somehow refashioned, and it seems it's not just the veil as I assumed in last week's column. But we still haven't seen it, so I guess we'll all have to wait for the big day. Chase also surprised Brooklyn with a new honeymoon destination, Florence, but he had to sell his truck to make it happen. I love Tracy making Brooklyn realize that buying him a new truck as a gift would be an insult, and make his loving sacrifice to finance their honeymoon worthless. Even though none of this was really plot-pushing, Tracy and Brooke Lynn's bonding moments are touching and fun to watch.
So Alexa's appeal hearing just happens to be the weekend of the wedding, so she can't go with Gregory as his plus one. And now we know how he'll end up with Tracy on his arm. Monday's preview seems to indicate Lois is going to set them up. Anna's discussion with Valentin about Pikeman was just off. He lied to her, even after she questioned what she found to be discrepancies in his recollection. After her talk with Brennan last week, which also had me questioning how she's overlooking the obvious, I have to believe she knows what's going on and Valentin is running Pikeman now. Maybe she just doesn't have what she needs to prove it yet. Nain has been flawlessly running the Metro Court with Olivia for some time, and now suddenly it's all going to hell. I immediately suspected this was about Carly taking it back, and Friday's episode proved that to be true. I was at least glad Diane informed Jason, who wants to buy Nina's half, that so far Carly hasn't accepted anyone else's help in doing so. But they weren't Jason, were they? I can hear the conversation now. Jason. I left you half of my estate, and you never got it. If you had, you never would have been in this position, so really this is me giving you back what you lost because of me. Carly. If you put it that way, okay? Oh, and Jason leaving half his estate to Carly? Yeah, many fans were not happy about that and felt it should have all gone to his kids. But Drew said it, Jason and Carly always come first with one another. Friday's show ended in part with Lucy doing what she does best, making a mess of things. She royally screwed up the home and heart segment. As much as she annoys me, I love the writing of her argument with Maxie specifically Maxie telling Lucy that her love affair with herself was their real problem. And Lucy only proved that by making the entire segment about herself and her accomplishments. Based on Cody and Sasha's talk about her career goals in the same episode, I have a feeling Sasha will go back to deception, but more on the business side with perhaps an appearance just here or there on TV. That's it for my opinions on this week's episodes. As always, leave your own thoughts in the comments.